Hi, welcome back to the Backpacker Coach. Today I have another special episode of Chris Kramer's and the Sand Froon, the girls missing from Panama. So today in this episode, I wanted to go over whether it's possible that the girls had possibly fallen off the trail and into a small ravine. And so we're going to go over a couple of the interesting things about this theory and see um, whether it's possible or not and kind of go into a couple interesting things about this theory. So one of the interesting things about them having to fall off the trail is that they were specifically looking for a slope of between 30 to 40 degrees and it had to be at least that so I believe so they if they fall they can't get back they can't climb back up. That is what I believe that they were looking at and so we're going to look at some of the areas that they may have fallen off and see what you think and hopefully i'll also set up another video do a part two and i'll actually be able to show you where these spots are um, but that's going to take a little bit of time to be able to do but in this one we're just going to kind of go over some of the interesting things about whether or not they f fell off the trail so let's get into it okay so i wanted to just show you this interesting view of the timing of when Chris and Lisanne turned on or turned off their phones and whether they you know called the emergency whether they just um, turned on the phone or whether they actually used the phone that kind of thing I kind of wanted to go over some of the interesting things that are all just really strange with how they use the phones so first, just to get a, a bearing here of, of what's going on, you can see that this is um, the days going down this direction, and this is the times across the top. So the first day, you can see that Chris and Lisanne, their first emergency call was was right was right in here, which was the 1639 you know, and 1651. So I have some more stuff to talk about that. Um, on the later part of this video and we're going to kind of go into some possible theories but for right now I just wanted to make note of that so the the biggest thing that I just wanted to look and show you guys about the oddity of the turning on the phone is the 10 o'clock and the 1 o'clock now if you look down through all of the days that they turned on the phones and you look at the time when they turned on the phone it's very interesting to see the timing of when they turn the phones on and they're very similar in the times which i don't know how they would have done that i guess there's one possible way that i'll talk about in a minute but if you look at the first on the day three on uh, day two here the first time it was 10 53. there was only one different time it was over here it was 9 30. and then the next time 1016 and then 1050 which is only three minutes different than this one and then 1026 and then way down at the very end again is 1051 which is really close to the 1053 but 1053 1050 1051 i mean all within you know they're all very very close in timing at 10 o'clock in the morning that just seems very very odd i would think that it would be much more random and when they would be checking it's like why turn on the phone and just check you know just check the time i, I don't get it and then you have the other time of one o'clock in the day and then you have the uh, 156 150 142 137 and 137 which is crazy how it exactly the same time two days in a row just checking now that's just checking you know turning on the phone and not doing anything with it of course there was no pin entered but still why would you turn on the phone exactly at the same time that just makes entirely no sense to me um on top of that if back here you know that they tried calling you know 911 and 112 and all that stuff and if they had no signal here what would be the point of turning your phone on again i mean you had one more call here it was the last time they called 
which was the third day. And then that's it. They, they didn't ever try calling again, but that would make sense to make to not call again, because if you have no signal, you're not going to keep calling over and over because you can't get a signal. Why turn on the phone at the same time every day? I just find that really weird. And same time every day around one. I just is very strange. I just can't explain it. I don't know why anybody would turn the phone on exactly the same time every day. Um, it has been mentioned that it's very interesting that possibly of like around somebody's break time and around a lunch time. Um, that's, you know, interesting, but regardless of whether, you know, somebody else was making the calls or they were making the calls, if Chris and the sand were making the calls all except for this one third day, I mean, the, all of these line up exactly in respect of the time. They all that just is very strange to me. We're going to go over a few other things in detail in the later part of this video about some of the possibilities of why some of this stuff could have happened. But I just find this very odd that they would turn on their phone at the same time every single day. And of course, we know that we have multiple days that they didn't ever turn their phone on. And then there was this last one where it was uh, Chris's phone, of course, after this time and period where Lissanne's phone was turned on and then off. It died at five o'clock in the morning and that was it. And then they only, they only used Chris's phone for the rest of these. But regardless, this is just strange. And I know I'll keep saying it over and over, but I just don't know why in the world they would be all at the same time, always checking at you know, around 10.30, you know, 10.50, and always around, you know, 1.40. I mean, that's darn close, all those were at 1.40. That's just really strange to me. Um, go ahead and leave a comments below if you can, if you have any ideas on why you would, you know, turn on your phone at the same time every day. Go ahead and leave your comments below. Um, my only guess of how they would do that, I mean, remember, they have no way of looking at the time. They have no way to be able to tell. The only way, my guess, is to be able to know an exact time is by like a shadow hitting something. And so you could say, all right, if the shadow hits this point, I'm going to turn on my phone. So you're turning on your phone every day at that time. Okay, but why? Why would you turn your phone on at the same time every day? It doesn't make any sense. What's the reason for it? And why would you turn on your phone anyway? You don't really need to turn on your phone. If you know that you don't have any cell phone signal and you know it's during the morning, what difference does it make what time it is? So I don't know. That just is very strange. In the next part of the video, we're going to try to use the phone log and the, the last pictures that were taken and try to just look at some possible um, theories and look at do these match in respect of the theories that were that people have given as well as you know does this make sense with the lost theory and does this make sense with you know the kidnap theory anything like that so we're just going to try to go over does this mostly does this make sense with the lost theory and we're going to go over that in the next part of the video. All right, guys. So we're going to look at a couple different, I guess you call theories on what kind of could have happened. But I wanted to kind of go over how much time really has lapsed through the, the time of after they got past the top of, of the mirror door and all that stuff. Because I don't think people really realize how much time was spent going down and possibly back up and all that kind of stuff. It, it's very um, interesting to look at. And so I just thought we should at least look at actually what really time is spent, where, what happened, you know, with the timing. It's, it's just very interesting to look at, to really break it down. This is the top of the El Pinista Trail of the Mirador. And if we look at the girl's pictures, you know that they walked all the way down to this last photo. Okay. And we know that that last photo, if you believe that this photo is real. So this, the last photo, this photo was taken at 155. All right. So we know that if you believe the timing, now we have to decide on 
how long did it take Lisa Ann and Chris to get from this point to this point? So it took them 40 minutes if you go by their pictures. The one interesting thing that we've talked about in other videos is that there are other people that have traveled this point to this point, and it only took them 20 minutes roughly. And it already took them already double that time, 40 minutes, which is also kind of interesting. Already says maybe that they're getting really tired. That's very possible. I know people have also said it also depends on whether the trail was, you know, was dry or muddy, that kind of thing. But it was pretty dry for the most part. Also, if you look at the back of her legs, Chris's legs, you can tell that there's, you know, some mud and stuff on the back of her legs. So there's still with some puddles and different things. So if we decide that it took 40 minutes to go from here to here, so now how long if we decide they stopped here and didn't go any further and decided to go back up, how long would it take them? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that we're gonna double the time, so it's gonna be 80 minutes, and then I'm also gonna give them an extra half an hour. So I'm gonna say, they could easily make it back to the top in a uh, 110 minutes, okay? So they should have been able to make, easily make it back to the top by 345 and going by those numbers, okay? So 345. Now here's what's interesting. If you look at when they made their calls, that was 439. That was still 54 minutes after that time that they should have easily been able to make it back to the top. So that's a lot of time. And so you have to remember that from the time that the last photo was taken to when the calls were made was quite a long time. It was actually two hours and 39 minutes. That's a very long time. That's, you know, nearly three hours past this photo when this photo was taken. That's a very long time. So something tells me that if you want to believe in the lost slash fall theory, something had to happen in that time. And I'm going to try to come up with a couple different scenarios that would make sense for how long, why there's such a long period of time in there, okay? So here are my couple theories of, of what would actually could have possibly happened. So we know that it was Chris and Lasan took a very long time to get back up if they were going up this direction. So this first one, we're going to say they were trying to go back up. And for some reason, they were going up extremely slowly. So here's my first possible um, theory of why they were going so slowly because they shouldn't have been going up that slowly. I mean, there are two young, healthy, relatively healthy girls, and so they should have easily been able to make it back up to the top. Here's one possible scenario. So, as you remember, they found Lisanne's foot and it had crushed metatarsals. So, here's what I might think of might have happened. So, a rock might have dislodged and it landed on her foot. And so, but she didn't really think that it was, you know, too bad, but hurt, but she didn't know, you know, what happened exactly. She didn't know she broke, you know, anything, but it hurt, obviously. But they're like, well, we have to keep, you know, going back up the trail. So, if they were hobbling back up the trail slowly, you know, it would be extremely painful on the foot and they were trying to take their time and somehow Lisanne loses her balance and falls off the trail because she, you know, can't balance herself very well. And there are some steep areas, you know, along this part of the trail. It is possible that they could have fallen off the trail or Lisanne could have fallen off the trail first. Now, here's why I think it's possible that Lisanne fell off the trail first. Now, if you go back to the call logs and you look, who called first? The iPhone. That's Chris. She called first, which would make sense because if Lisanne fell, she wouldn't be calling first. She would be, you know, maybe, maybe incapacitated for a minute or just trying to figure out whether she's okay. And like we said before, that was a very large gap between when, when Chris called as opposed to when Lisanne called. 
So then if Lysanne called, eventually maybe she was obviously hurt a little more, but she was obviously not hurt enough to be able to grab her phone and try to call, you know, the 112 because something really seriously has, had happened because she fell off the trail. That's one possibility, is that that would make sense, at least with those numbers. Now, like we have mentioned before, the biggest issue I have is that day, if you had an emergency, you would try to call frantically. I mean, I would imagine like, you know, 10, 20 times trying to get through. And that is what is so odd about this. Now, there is one interesting thing that this is not the full log sheet. They said that this is incomplete. Now, who knows what else that they have, what that means. I mean, does it mean that they didn't show, you know, previous calls or calls? I mean, it's hard to say what that exactly means, but we at least have this information. And so we have to go by this information. And so why they wouldn't have a bunch of other calls right in here, right after, doesn't really make sense. Why would they just skip showing all the rest of the calls? I mean, if you were in an, emer an emergency, I mean, you would try to call a bunch of different times, not just once and be like, eh, you're fine, we're falling down, we'll just take a rest and not worry about it for later. Nobody's going to do that. That's ridiculous. I mean, if you get hurt, you're going to try to call, you know, a bunch of times. And then after, you know, five, six, seven, eight times, that doesn't work. All right, then you stop calling and you probably are not going to call again because you know that you can't get, you know, any cell phone service, which leads us to the next part. If they did fall and were stuck in one spot, that does not really work with some of the rest of these times it would more look like they were moving or trying to move to be able to get um, a cell phone signal that they were able to actually get a cell phone signal you know for like two seconds so if you were able to get something for one or two seconds that means that they were in a different place than where where they originally were or at least one of them was so like somebody had mentioned before it's possible that chris was actually venturing out to different areas maybe to be able to try to call which i suppose is possible but you have to remember you're in a jungle a thick jungle and you're not going to be move, moving very far so that's you know unlikely that she's going to move very far so i'm just not sure about that so let's go back for a second and go to the other possible scenario the other possible scenario is more of the lost scenario and that's where at this point or somewhere just thereafter they somehow go off the trail and get turned around and are trying to find their way back and then they after you know nearly two hours or whatever it is two two and a half three hours they finally decide we are lost this is not good and then they try to call the problem with that theory is if they just get lost that doesn't really explain you know, where the girls were found or parts of the girls were found and where, you know, the backpack was found and that kind of stuff. It just, they would have probably, if they just got lost, it's more than likely they would have just disappeared and they would have never been found. So it's more likely that if they did fall off the trail, fall into one of those smaller ravines with the uh, smaller rivers that connect to the larger river, that's really the only possible other scenario that I would see that would make any sense. So is there anything else that suggests that Lysanne fell and Chris had to go and help Lysanne? And that would be the shorts of Chris. If you can see right here, there is a huge rip in the back of her, her jean shorts. And another rip here as well, a smaller one there. So if you think that if Lisanne fell and she couldn't get back up because she was already hurt, and instead of going for help, which is odd in itself, but for some reason, instead of going for help, she decided to go and try to help Lisanne instead by scooting down like on her butt and trying to get to Lisanne, which would make sense that she would rip up the back of her jeans or jean shorts 
because she doesn't have, she would be, you know, going over rocks and over, you know, sharp, you know, branches and all kinds of stuff, trying to get down to where Lisanne was. And more than likely, they would have still also had to continue further down. I don't believe that they would have just fallen all the way down to the bottom of the riverbed, but they probably would have fallen partially and then they would have had to work their way down to the bottom of the riverbed because they couldn't go back up. This would, would be a good guess. And so they had to keep going down and maybe then once they went got down, they couldn't get back up. That's, I guess, the one theory. So that's the, I think, what kind of shows that's possible that Chris could have slid down on her butt to get these kind of big damage to her shorts. But now I want to go over some of the spots or locations where they might have fallen off. You look at some of the different YouTube videos out there of the trail. There is somebody that did the whole trail, especially after the Mirador. And if you watch that whole thing, you'll see that there are, you know, a good, I would say, somewhere between five to seven spots where you could you could fall and it would not be good, at least. And what's really interesting though is that there's some of them is falling off to the right side of the trail and some of it's falling off to the left side of the trail, which would be, depending on if you're falling off to the left, you'd actually be falling down to the river and to the right, you might be falling off just into a, a ravine, maybe a smaller river, and then having to go down to the river. But I want to show that to you and go over just kind of what the terrain was in the area. I'm going to show you a couple maps of what that looks like. Okay, I wanted to get back to showing you this map first and just that it's a little confusing. And so I wanted to show you this is the top of the mirror door and this is the trail going down to this river. And this is the river at the, the bottom. Now, from here, it's very difficult to see what this terrain looks like because it almost looks reversed. It looks very weird just by the shadows. So I just wanted to first show you a topo map. So here's the mirror door again. And if you notice, actually, the trail actually does not follow the ridge line like I thought. I thought it was like right up here, but it actually follows, it's off to the left of the ridge line for most of it all along this whole thing it's all off to the left and something that and this the river is down here and this is where they cross the river and so on and so forth so now i will uh, i will put up a link in the description below of uh the guy who did the uh this part of the trail and you'll notice where he'll stop and he'll take pictures of various areas where maybe um, Lisanne and Chris, where they could have fallen off the trail. Which is interesting though, is that most of them were off to the left falling down and then not till they get to, I think somewhere like around here, that they could have fallen off to the right because about most of this actual trail, you're kind of stuck in more of a ravine a little you know it's like three to six feet high so you can't really fall off of anything you could fall down but you can't fall um you know to the side except for in a few spots and also you'll notice that there are in a, a few spots there's a few little trails that have been kind of blocked off that go off the different directions but um that's just something I wanted to show you, just kind of how this trail actually goes along, just the, not along the ridge, but on kind of the left side. So I wanted to show you the 14 possible locations that Lisanne and Chris could have fallen off the trail. And if you notice the first few, most of them are to the left and then they start to go more to the right. There's one to the left and then the rest of them are to the right. Now this is obviously starting from the top 
going down to the river. So now this is kind of a neat photo. So I was able to take an area and put it into Blender and then use the pretty much the information that NASA created along the entire world of height and depth of all the terrain of the whole entire world. And you're able to actually create a three-dimensional map of any place in the world. So that is what we have here. So here's the top of the mirror door. And as you know, like I said, it doesn't really run along the top. I kind of messed this up a little bit, so it should probably be a little bit off to this edge here. But you can see the terrain that they were in where they could have possibly fallen off this way or fallen off this way in some of the areas. And there might be a very small river running through the here or even down here. Um, that's something that hopefully people will check out at some point and find out whether there are smaller rivers. But they know this one obviously exists for sure. And this is the path that you take along going, continuing on. And this right here is where the last photo of the day pictures were taken. So anyway, I just wanted to show you this image of the three-dimensional look of what they were kind of hiking in. And it's a, just a neat image to kind of get an idea of, of where they could possibly have maybe fallen off or walked or wandered to. And we do also have some new information that would lead us to believe that wherever the photos were taken, that they may have not actually made it down to the main river because it's too large. That, i show you this picture. This is a 3D representation of the night photos. And you can see that what they believe is a very narrow, small canyon. And so that would lead people to believe that whether, you know, they fell off, you know, the trail on the right side or the left side, that they fell into a very small ravine and didn't really, they didn't make it all the way back. They didn't like fall and roll all the way down the hill, all the way down to this main river, but they fell off down into a, like down here or somewhere down here because there's little tiny ravines all over this ridge mountain here. And so it would definitely look like where at least where the uh, images were taken, that it's in a very narrow, steep ravine. So I just wanted to show you guys that. So also I wanted to talk a little bit about the evidence about what they found and what the conditions of the bones were and what that suggests. So I wanted to show you this map. So this map is starts all the way from where they allegedly started and shows the trail of the entire trail that the imperfect plan guys um, hiked as well as it also shows where all the pieces and parts of Chris and Lisanne were found. So I want to just show you something some something kind of interesting here. So let's go back to this. We're back to the last spot right here. Okay where, which actually it should be there. And some of these might be a little bit off, but anyway, um, we're still working on this map, to make sure that it's actually correct, but uh, where some of the locations of some of the things are. But I wanted to generally show you some interesting things of what's going on here. So this is the last spot, the last photo was taken somewhere in here, which I believe should actually be here. And then if they went, started back up, and somewhere in here, they fell off. Maybe down here, maybe down here. Somewhere is a possibility of where they could have fallen. If they fell, let's just say that they fell this way and they fell somewhere stuck down in here. So their bodies and the backpack had to travel all the way at least to here. 
Chris's shorts were found here, somewhere between here and here. And the hip bone and Lisanne's shoe were found, and the rib bone were found here. And if you keep going, and keep going, and keep going, the backpack was found like five miles, I think it was, way down here on another little offshoot of another little small river, which is near the Alto Romero little village. But this is the one thing to me that screams out that something is not right. And this is what I'm going to explain to you guys. So if you think about where these bones were found, the one major thing about where these bones were found is that there were no micro scratches on the bones. And if they'd be tumbling down the river for miles, allegedly they were going for a long way before they got to where they stopped, they must, the, they were at least traveling. I mean, that's a long, long ways. I mean, they had to travel all the way from here. And they allegedly said that there are no micro scratches on the bones. They're completely clean. That is impossible because their bones would have scratches as they'd be moving along the riverbed. So that is the one major thing that I think something is definitely wrong. It's a clear indication that it certainly looks to be foul play. The other interesting thing is the condition of the bones. And what's interesting about the bones is that Chris's bones were actually in a further state of decomposition than Lisanne's bones. So that's another odd thing because like we were going over before, everything suggests that Lisanne probably fell first and then Chris tried to go and help. But there's probably plenty of other little odd things that, you know, one could say that could have happened. But still, there's a lot of odd things about this case and about all the different odd things that show that there's more than good possibility that it was foul play. So anyway, I just wanted to go over those things with you and let me know what you think in the comments below.